I hope you enjoyed this moment with us. And if you are our constant viewer, we like to appreciate you and we want to encourage you. Keep visiting, keep coming. We are here for you. If today is your first time um, tuning in, we'd like you to subscribe, to like, and to share this very video that you are watching. I believe very well that there are people in your contact that would like to hear this message. What is being talked about today. The blessing that you have had today, I hope there are people in your life that you want to share with and I'd like you to do that one. Stand as families. Hallelujah. Can all my children come too? I'm the preacher, but we all in it. Come beside me. Come, come stand beside me. Lead the keyboard. Come here, bless. Get the children at the children's church. Good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you are here with your the husband, wife, and children, please come. Husband, wife, and children. If the wife not here, no. Husband, wife, and children. If they are in church, I want you to come here. Husband, wife, and children. Praise the Lord. Husband, wife, and children. Perfect. Go there. Send her over. Now, praise the Lord. There is something that God was showing me over this week and God is saying the church the church that I created the church that I made that's how I want people to go to church I want families to be in my presence because I have a plan for every one of them that's why as parents, as long the children are under your roof, don't leave them home. Husband and wife, endeavor to be in church every day with your family. Because everybody, God was telling me that every day that you spend in my presence, there is something I am doing in your life. And I am doing in the life of those children. Don't forsake that. Regardless, except the child cannot walk. Then don't bring them to church. But even if they are sick, bring them before church. We'll tell them before church will finish, you will be well. And tell me and let me know before church finish, they will be well. God wants families the reason for which today and I will be in my preaching for societies are spoiling today is because we don't have this anymore husband is there wife is there cheering at there everybody has a different agenda but when you all come from here you go home with one idea with what was the worship the service the whole house is with one idea today if you are divided, you go home with divided ideas. And God is saying, now, nah, you're going to raise your hands to heaven. The fathers, mothers, put your hands down, children, put your hands down. Father, raise your hands. Raise your right hands. And you're going to promise God today. You're going to make a promise to God from today. I'm going to make it my duty to get my family to church every day. Not only on Sundays, but also I'm going to endeavor to start to get them in church on Wednesdays. Hallelujah. Now raise, repeat after me, fathers. Say, dear God, fathers, not everyone, only fathers, I want to make this promise. Nobody make this promise because it's their obligation, it's their duty as a father. Say, dear God, today I stand before you I know I am a human, but I need your strength 
and I need your courage that I will do everything in my power to make sure my wife and my children are in service. So help me, God. God bless you. Take your seats. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The second group I want to talk to here today, I want on this stage, if husbands and wife are here, I want you to the front. Husbands and wife, you are in church. Please come to the front. Please hurry up. We don't have no time. You are husband. No, no, no. Once you came as a family, that's it. Only those who husband and wife here and their children are not here. Husband and wife, you here. Your children are not here, but you here. Yeah. Come, husband and wife, please come. Two of you, come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Husband and wife. The children are not here, but the husband. No, no, no. My man, you came as family already. If you came as family, don't come. Praise the Lord. You are a husband and a wife in the service today. Please come. Husband and wife. Amen. Add all your husband and wife, please. You got to come. Eh? Well, it's all right. In Jesus' name. Now, what God wants is husband and wife to come to service together. Make sure that you do everything that two of you can be in church. And if you have children and they are not here today, work on that and make sure that your children are in church. Those of you who don't have the children yet, make it as an obligation today that you're going to do everything to make sure that even when the children come, you will get them in church. It's very important. You don't know when he will come. Today, the Bible says when we get to heaven, we will know each other. You don't want to be in heaven and see someone who when you spend the rest of the life together, is in hellfire in Jesus name Lord I pray that you will bless these couples that they will remain faithful to your word in Jesus name today for those of you who are here and you are not with your husbands or you are not with your wives God will help you God will help you don't give up. Keep praying for them. Keep praying for them. Make them your prayer point. But God will hear you. Hallelujah. And God will listen to you. This morning... It's not Father's Day, but we are in the month of fathers. On Father's Day, Edo came here and he spoke greatly to us fathers. A very touching message. A lesson that every father in here will wake up from their sleep. Amen. Because that's what God wants. But we are in the month of fathers. So today I will be talking again to fathers. I try to sway away from this message. But every time I try to get out, God brings me back. Because the message I really want to preach today was very exciting. And I really needed that message. But every time I try to go there, the Holy Spirit brings me back to this place. Hallelujah. Fathers, and the reason for which we're talking to fathers also, the church is talking about growth. And if the church is talking about growth, the fathers have a greater responsibility to get this church growing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And all those, you know, God gave everything. All the responsibilities on this earth. God gave it to fathers. God gave every responsibility to fathers. He gave, he gave the mothers one responsibility. One. And the only responsibility that God gave to the woman is to help your husband. Hallelujah. Help your husband. So the woman is only there to help you to succeed. And that's why woman, you also have a greater responsibility. That's why you need to use your influence. You know, one of the things that you can do is influence your husband with the greater things that he can succeed. You did. If your husband do not succeed, you have failed your duty to God as a woman. Hallelujah. If your husband do not succeed, you a woman, you have failed your duty because the only duty that God gave you the woman is to help your husband. And the reason he want you to help the husband so that your husband will succeed and become the man that he God created him to be. Hallelujah. So women, we have a great responsibility to help them to be the man that God made them to be. Hallelujah. Today, I want to speak to you on the thing. When fathers fail, hallelujah, when fathers fail, fathers have greater function from God. He made them the head of the home. He made them to have dominion. He may give them authority, gave them power. He gave them strength. He gave them everything that they need to succeed in life and bring up a great family, to bring up a great church, to bring, bring up a great nation. That's the responsibility that God has given to fathers. And when fathers don't take this duty seriously, when fathers fail, everything fails. Hallelujah. When fathers fail, it's, it's not an easy thing for the fathers to fail. That's why we need to pray for our fathers that they don't fail. Hallelujah. Today, we see that a lot of fathers have failed are failing. A lot of fathers are sleeping. A lot of fathers are not awake. A lot of fathers are chasing things that are not important and they are leaving out the important things. Matthew chapter 13 verse 25. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sow weeds among the wheat and went away. Now I want us all to read it today, but where the poor everyone poor fathers. Hallelujah. Let's go one to go. But while fathers were sleeping, his enemy came and sow weeds among the wheat and went away. Hallelujah. Today, while fathers are sleeping, very busy on things that are not important, the first major important, greater responsibility that God gave you is your family. The first responsibility he gave you was your wife. And then the wife came with children. So you have a responsibility. Every other thing will stay away. But the only thing that will remain forever is your wife and your children. The houses will go. The cars will go. The bank account will go. Someone else will take over your bank account tomorrow. The house you don't sleep in. Someone else will sleep in it when you are gone. But what is the first responsibility is 
to make sure that before you leave this earth, your child is in God. Your children are in God. Your wealth is in God. Because when your children and your wealth is in God, when you are going, you relax. You know there's a generation that will succeed. Today, fathers don't even have time with their children. We are providing for them. We are paying the school fees. We are buying them the toys. We are buying them the iPhones. We are buying them the televisions. We are buying them the latest Nikes. We are buying them everything. But we fail to put something valid in them. So while we are sleeping, the enemies is sowing wheat in our families. They sow the wheat, they're gone. Hallelujah. Today, if you look in our churches, you see few men, a lot of women. Few men, a lot of women. Because the husbands think that the important thing is to be home, is to bring money, I'm bringing money, I'm bringing everything, so what else do I need? I want to tell you something. The greatest joy of every parent is to sit down in your own age and see your children succeed in God. It brings you joy in everything. What, what profit will it give you after you collect everything and you see your child is a drug addict? You don't even have time for what you have because you have not planted anything. The enemy has planted a seed of drugs in him. And now you got all the wealth. And the child don't even know that the father has wealth. He's walking in the street talking by himself. And you, with all the money, every day, tears are coming in your eyes. No happiness because your child has not succeeded. Today, what father is supposed to do is what mothers are doing. Fathers are supposed to be seeking God for their families. But it's the mothers that are seeking God. And I want to tell you mothers, keep seeking God. Even if your husband don't follow you, keep seeking God. Because what God will do for those women who are trying to get their husbands to seek God and they are not doing it, God will fill the gap of that husband. Because of your intersection. Hallelujah. Fathers. Luke chapter 12, verse 20 to 21. What is the use when you get all the words? Say, but God said to him, You fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared yourself? Who will get it? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Fathers, if you are not rich towards God, you will lose everything. Everything that you work for so hard will go in thin air. Make sure that your priority is to see you in God and your children in God. In my house, as long as you are under my roof, you have to be in church on Sunday and Wednesdays. If you go, you can make your decision. Right now, I praise God because I know where Bless and Anita, Audrey, Whitney are. They know what God is to them. My focus now is on favor and shaitan. When I get them to a place, when I'm dying tomorrow, I'll be happy because I know there's a generation that will go after me. That should be your priority. Amen. 
Fathers need to take on the roles to help. Hallelujah. God has given us three functions as fathers. We have three key functions that God has given us. Number one, you are the priest of the family. The fathers, you are the what? The priest of the family. You are also the prophet of your family. And thirdly, you are the king and the gatekeeper to your family. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, fathers are priests, they are prophets, and they are kings. Today, if a father don't take these three functions serious, you put your hands on your head tomorrow in your old age. And the children, your own children will look at you and call you useless. Amen. Because God will help some of them. Praise the Lord. A father is the priest of the house. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. As Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the savior. So just as Jesus Christ is the head of the church, the father is the head of his family. Now, what did Jesus do? When Jesus saw that the church was going astray, when Jesus, the mission, the role of Jesus is to lead the church to heaven. Amen. It's to lead the church to heaven. Because the Bible says on the day he will present the church as bride to his father. So the work of Jesus Christ is to make sure that the church is preparing for heaven. And let me tell you something. The Bible says God, Jesus will present a righteous church to God. A righteous church he will present to God. Hallelujah. And that's why he's working on every day. That's why he's working on the church every day. That's why he gave his own life for the church. He died for the church. He took tough decisions for the church. He took decisions that were not fair, decisions that were not popular for the church. We, passed, we heard pastor preaching here the other day. Jesus took some of the most difficult decisions. He said, if you want to follow me, take the cross. He said, if you follow me, people will hate you. He did not tell us what we want to hear. And this is where fathers, you have to come in. You will tell your children things that they don't want to hear. Don't be intimidated by that. Let me tell you something. Always, don't be afraid to lose your child so that you can gain them back. Somebody did not hear me. Don't be afraid to lose the child so you can get them back. The reason for which today a lot of parents are afraid to talk because if I talk, my child will leave the house. And when they leave the house, how people will look at me. I'm a bad father. So because we want to be good fathers, so we pamper them. Even if they are doing the right, wrong thing, we shut our mouths because we want them to stay home. But they are in the house and you are losing them forever. They are in the house and you are losing them forever. I, prefer, I, told, my, I told my children, I showed all of my children what to do. I told them, if you think my house is too, you do, the rules of my house is too much, there's youth service out there. You can go, the government can give you a place, you can stay there. My roof only contains people who follow the rules of God. No option, no compromise. As long as you are in my house, it's what you follow. You want to go, you are welcome. You can get out there and do 
what you can do. But well, one thing I know, even if my child do leave my roof, if they go, they will come back forever. But because we are so afraid, oh my child, oh my child. See some parents look at their children and bring their boyfriend or their girlfriend in the house. And then they go to their room. And it's and it can it can then they serve them with food. My roof. I told my the only people that come to my house, your fiancés or your husbands. That's all. Amen. But fathers need to take responsibilities. If your children, how can your children be on your roof and they are not in church? Doing what? The role of a priest is to lead the family to God. You must lead your family. Do whatever it takes. Take all the decisions. Take everything it takes that your family is in God. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 to 21. Listen to this. To fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Father, the first thing you need to do, the word of God has to be fixed in your heart and in your mind. Today, most fathers don't even have... Some of us, our children have never seen us with Bible. Amen. We've never sat down to read the Bible. And our children follow to see. Amen. So how, if you, you yourself don't even follow, you don't read it. How can you pass it on to your children? Say, fix these words of man in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands. And bind them on your foreheads. It means you must take the word of God very serious. Take it with all you have. Take it with all your being. Take the word of God. Fix it in your mind and fix it in your heart. Because if you, if you are guided by the word of God, you will be able to guide your family to the word of God. So God did not say go to the children first. He said first of all, fix yourself. As a father, put the word of God in your mind. Let it be on your heart. Let it be in your mind. You know the word of God first as a father. When Shetem was a year or two, every time I woke up to pray, because I pray every 12 midnight, I'll be praying, I'll be praying. And when I turn my back, she'll tell me standing right on my back. And she will be with me for that one, that 30 minutes or one hour. And then I will take her back to bed. Amen. She saw me pray. When I'm praying at home, I don't, sorry, cheering, but that's it. You have to listen to daddy pray. So I, I'm a loud prayer. I go around the house praying. Some days when I'm ready, I go around the house praying. If possible, some days I will enter their rooms and lay my hands on them. Hallelujah. I take responsibility because the Bible says we will come to the gatekeeper's one. Hallelujah. The next verse, we have not finished yet. Say, teach. Now listen. Let's go. Everybody read together. Say what? Teach them to your children. Talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk alone the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Some of us, we've never talked about the word of God in our houses. The only thing we talk about, money, the football game, politics. So the children know all those things. But the word of God, they don't know it because we are not talking about it at home. Hallelujah. So how would you learn? It's a 
Isaiah, when you sit down home with your children, teach it to them. You know, this morning we were coming, I was talking to the kids in the car. I was talking about, I was talking about them coming to church and dressing decently. So I asked one of them, I say, the way you, feel, you dress this morning, if prime minister was going to call you, will you go like this? She said, no. So if you can't go like this, next time, go to church as the way the prime minister wants you. It was a lesson I was passing on to her that the first honor is God. It's see, when you walk alone the road, talk about God. When you and your children are walking, talk about God. You sit down home, talk about God. Teach it to them when you are walking, when you get up, teach it to them. Most of us in our homes, we don't even have devotions. Can I hear amen? We don't have devotions at home. But we want God to work miracle on our children to be good children. We are failing our children. We are failing our whole generation. Today, most of us are sitting here because our fathers taught us. Most of us are in the church today not because you hold salvation from here, but because your father showed you the way. Today, you know why? You know, the other day I was talking to, to some friends. And I said, the reason for which here, let's talk about, our, you know, other societies, I don't, but I'm talking about the African community because the statistic I do. You see, most of our African children are committing suicide. Do you know why they are committing suicide? Because they don't know the way. Because the parents did not show them the way. So the only way they know that when things are tough, I will commit suicide. But if they know the way, they won't commit suicide. They know who to call. I got a lot of, sometimes my phone rings three o'clock in the morning. And I take the phone and somebody's on the phone crying. Pastor, I'm tired with life. I want to take my life. This life is no more. And I will get up and say, look, you don't need to take your life. And I will encourage them in the word of God and I will pray for them. And they say, I feel okay now. If that person did not know who to call, they would take their life that night. I remember one called me on video and they had a bowl of tablet of medications, a big bowl of medications. And they were crying and say, I'm going to take this medication. I'm tired with life. I'm going to die. But I just want you to pray for me before I die. So I said, if you can remember me to pray for you before you die, then wait for me before you take the medication. I was going to tell you something. And I throw them the word of God and I taught them the word of God and I pray for them. I said, do you want to take the medication? I said, no. And they dumped the medications in the bin. Why? They were saved because they, they know there's a, there's a seed that is in them that know that when things are going wrong, I know where to turn. But if we don't teach our children those things, they don't know where to turn. If we don't bring them to church and they grow in the church, they don't know where to turn. That's why today, most families are suffering, they are crying, their children are dying here and there because they don't want to put the, the, the values in their children. Teach your children the word. It will help them tomorrow. Praise the Lord. We focus on building wealth for them. The greatest wealth you can build for your children is God. I told my children, my house is not yours. You got to buy your own houses. Forget it. I assume my wife myself hit 70 age, we're selling all our houses. And you guys will rent for us a house. Then I will be traveling every day. And you will be buying the tickets for me to travel. Why I enjoy my money. So you need to work hard now for yours. Hallelujah. The only thing I will put in you is God. Because the Bible says when you seek your first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything will be added to you. Five years ago, there was a billion, there was a billion, multi-billionaire in Australia who died. He died and left 11 properties that each one was costing not less than 15 million. He left them with his only son. 
they did not count the small ones. They did not, the cash money was uncounted. But the property that was already paid for, he had no mortgages on them. Paid for. He had 11 property with more, not less than 50 million for one. In one year, he blew off all the money and he committed suicide and died. He, he played gamble with all his father's property because the father did not put value in him. His father took all the time to build wealth and the wealth went in other person's hand for free. Praise the Lord. You are the priest of your family. Lead your family to church. Deuteronomy 28 verse 40, 41, it says, if we refill teach our children, this is what will happen, say, you will have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them. Amen. You will have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them. Drugs will carry them. The street will carry them. Wrong things will carry them. If you don't teach them, you will not keep them. Hallelujah. If you don't teach your children, you will not keep them. Those lovely children, teach them. You want to keep them. You want to keep them. Teach them. Because there's a weed that the devil, the weed of, 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 of drugs, the devil is plenty. The weed of sexual immorality, the devil is plenty. Let me tell you something. When you hear most of the young people say, Mommy, you don't understand. Daddy, you don't understand. It's because they run behind a little boy that broke their heart. He said, my heart is broken. My heart is broken. What do you know about heart broken? If they know the word of God, they will wait for the appropriate time and their hearts will not be broken. Hallelujah. Baba, you don't understand. I was 10 years old. I was 23 years old. I was 19 years old. So I understand, I know what it means. Get out of the room and come and do something for me. You don't understand what? Get out. Hallelujah. If we don't teach them, say you will lose your sons and daughters, but you will not keep them because they will go into captivities. Captivities of the street. Captivity of prison compounds. Captivity of drugs. Captivities of craziness. It will go with them. Teach your children. Mothers, help your husbands to play their roles. I did not hear amen. I know this teaching is not popular today. But I want you to take it serious. If your husband is not doing something, work on it. And let me tell you something about women. I tell you, women, there's a message for women I will bring soon. But there is something about woman. Anything that woman wants, she can get it. The only one thing that women are not able to do is to get their husbands in church. The one thing is hard for them. If they want holiday, they can get holiday. They want the Lexus, they will get the Lexus. Whatever woman wants, you will do it. I tell you something. When you see them start serving, honey, you hungry? Honey, you eat out of something's on the way. Sometimes they will carry it for one man. They will tell you good things for one man. Ah, anything they will submit. The best time women submit is when they want to do something. When they want to throw a bomb, they will do anything. A woman wants anything, she will get it. Today, the world is controlled by women. The presidents are in those mansions, but most of the decisions are from their wives. That guy got to be fired from the government. You can't keep him as minister. Not in, you have to put him down. But he did nothing, honey. He must go. And sometimes the president will just get and say, he dismissed the minister. 
No reason. Because the wife, he cannot sleep. He go home, she's tormenting him. She's tormenting him until he takes this decision. When a woman wants something, she will try the gentle way. When the gentle way fail, she will go to the, to the natural way. She will not. And then sometimes your ear gets tired with a yeah, 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 But the only place they feel is to get their husbands in church. The same way you get the Lexus, try. Keep trying. Get them. You will get them one day. Don't give up. Keep trying. Hallelujah. The next function is the function of a prophet. You are the prophet of your home. Your voice is bigger than any voice over your family as a husband. Your voice is bigger than any voice in the family. If you can use your voice well, things will work. There was one woman, she was barren for 11 years. The husband paid her way. They went to Nigeria. They went to South Africa. They saw almost all the bigger prophets. They spent more than almost 200,000 because they wanted a child. And one day, the two of them went to one man of God. He said, what your woman wants, you got it. What your woman wants is with you. And the husband said, Why? He said, because you have not taken on your responsibility as a prophet in your home. And if you don't take your responsibility as a prophet in your home, no one, no prophet can take your responsibility. You are the prophet of that house. And he said, what do I do? He said, now give yourself to God and you start to be the intercessor of your house. You start to pray for your woman. Woman, and this man went home, he got it, and he fasted one time. He prayed for three days, and after three days, he said, Honey, come, kneel down. And the woman knelt before him and said, Today I break barrenness in this home in the name of Jesus. One week after the woman fell pregnant, one week after she fell pregnant, because the prophet took hold of his home. We see most times we men, we see our women are struggling. We never want to call them to pray for them. Hallelujah. You know, one time my wife was sick and we needed to go to the doctor. I mean, we had to go through a procedure and other things. It was not a tough, it was very tough. I could see my wife down. When we got the result from the hospital, in three days my wife lose more than 10 kilos. She drop. I took that letter from the doctor. I wanted to go to the pastor, and the voice spoke to me, say, You don't need a pastor. You have to tell me what you want with this letter. And I spent three days in that room. And I, I did not pray any other prayer. I only read what the doctor said. I read it to the pastor. I made mean to God. Say, God, this is what the doctor say. And I want you to look after it. After three days, when we went for the funnel, and we sat before the doctor, and the doctor asked her, what did you do? She said, nothing. Say, what did you take? Say, nothing. Say, nothing. There's nothing wrong with you. Everything is clear. You have never, but she said, but was it a mistake? But it's not a mistake because we follow you for some time. It's not a mistake. But how did it happen? And we do all say, God did it. When you, the husband, take responsibility, today, most of us have never even blessed our children. You must always bless your children. Call them. Let them kneel down. Take oil, anoint them, and pray for them. You are the prophet of your home. Bless your children. We want our children. Good things are our children. We don't bless them. And one of the places to even bless your children, but be careful now. 
The best place to bless your children is in your matrimonial room. The most sacred place in your house is your bedroom. Don't, don't allow friends to sleep in your bedroom under no condition. Amen. When strangers come to your house, don't allow them in your bedroom. It's the most sacred place in the house. Amen. You know, sometimes people can say, hey, your bedroom is not a playground. It's the most sacred place. The only way your bedroom becomes a playground, if you are a cheating wife or a cheating husband, never carry your children in your room to bless them. Somebody say amen. If you are a cheating wife and a cheating husband, the Bible said do not defy it. Do not defy your bed. When the Bible is talking about do not defy bed, that means you're carrying people there. But when you do things out of the way that respect and honor your room, you have defied that room. Then don't take your children there to bless. But the best thing, if, you're bare, if, you, if you are intact, always carry your children in the... When I want to tell my children something that is important for their life, I don't do it in the living room. I do it in my bedroom. And I talk to them and then I pray for them. If I want to bless them, I pray, I bless them in the bedroom. Because that's the sacred place. Because I am a prophet. I have to speak in my children's life. I want to tell God what I want of my children. I want to prophesy in their life. They will succeed. They will get married. They will have houses. They will have whatever they want. They will do it. I proclaim the blessing of God upon their lives. Because I am a prophet. Always, even if your children are married, once a while, call them and bless them. Any of my children are sick, I bring them home and I pray for them. And God does his work in their lives because I'm the prophet for that home. Lastly, you are the king and the protector. Let's put Ezekiel chapter 33, the last verse, and I'll be going soon. Ezekiel 33 verse 7. The son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. You are what? The watchman. You are the gatekeeper for your house. Don't let the enemy bypass you. When the enemy bypass you, he's going to hit your house. So as a man, you always have to be prayerful. Amen. The man has to be prayerful. If you can't pray, start to learn how to pray. Because your prayers, it doesn't matter how, if it can be one minute, it can be two minutes. Say, God, protect my house. Your voice is powerful. Most times we run behind the pastors to pray. When we leave our husbands at home, let them pray. Hallelujah. Say, say husbands, pray. They did not hear it. Say, husbands, pray. Yes. They are, the, they are the kings. They are the providers for that house. Amen. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 says, if you can't provide for your house, you are worse than a sinner. Put it there. Put it, First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. It's not there. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I did not say it. The word of God. That's why some of you, God, don't bless you. Because you don't even provide for your own families. You don't provide for your relatives. In Jesus' name. When fathers fail, a whole generation fail. That's why fathers, you need to stand that you don't feel. Every day I go to bed, I pray not to feel because I don't want blessed to feel. Because if I feel, blessed will feel and the children after him will feel. Every day I go to bed, I pray, I don't want Anita to feel. Because if I feel, Anita will feel and her children's children will feel. So you are not just standing for yourself. You are standing for generations. Don't let them down. Don't let them down. God is depending on you to bring up that generation so they can bring up the next 
generation. Your fathers brought you up well. So you need to bring your children up well. You need to bring your family up well. Other fathers failed. We will not read that, but Eli. Eli failed. He was the priest. And his children were doing wrong things. And he failed to take his responsibility as a father to discipline his children. In those days, what any children were doing, sleeping with women in the temple, eating, misusing their sacrifices, those things they were doing were subject to stoning of death. So Eli is supposed to stone his children to death because that was the penalty of those actions. But because his children, he's talked to them, my children, you need to listen. You know, God don't like that. And God don't do this. And na, 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 na. Because he failed, God took him from the priesthood. He lost the priesthood. It's God said, Eli, this priesthood, I promised that you will be here forever. But today, I'm taking it from you because you have failed me. His two sons died the same day. And when he heard the news, had the talk, he died also. Because of father failed, two sons died and the father himself went and they lost their priesthood. Jacob failed. Jacob's daughter was raped by certain people. The place they were stopping had a king's son. And when he heard it, instead of taking action as a father and decision, he waited for his sons to come from work. And then he told his sons, all oh, the people, my daughter was raped. Some of us, we wait for our children to take decisions for us. And when we take decisions from the children, it becomes a disaster. Because we don't want our children to feel bad, so we want to do, we want to do what they say. The children came, they took decision and the revenge and killed the people. Because of that, he could not stay, they had to run away. David failed as a father to take his responsibility. His son raped his daughter. Instead of taking decision, he kept quiet. So because he kept quiet, the girl brother, Absalom, took authority in his hand and killed his brother. He lost, he lost that and he lost Absalom himself. When parents fail, when fathers fail, the family fail. And when the family fail, the church fail. When the church fail, the community fail. When the community fail, the nations fail. Today, the reason for which we have a lot of problems around our nations today, most of our teenagers are running here and there. Government can't even control 13 years old. They are going through stealing cars and doing all things because fathers have failed in their homes. So it's the whole nation. Look at America. Every day there's guns. And most of the children who have the guns when they go to ask and say, because my, there's no fathers in my life. But they are killing other people, innocent people, because of a father who failed action. Today I want to encourage the men of this church. If other fathers around here feel, I want we, the fathers of this house, to wake up. Let's take our responsibility to make sure our families and our children are in God. Let's take the responsibility as priest, prophet, and the kings of our home. God bless you. I just like to bless you before I can leave you. I pray that the Lord will honor you. I pray that the Lord will increase you. The Lord will bless you. And I pray that God will give you the grace to accelerate into whatever he is calling you into doing. I pray that the grace and the glory of God will settle upon you this year. I pray that the Lord will give you an advantage over your enemy. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree in your life that God himself will go before you. I decree that your going out and your coming in this year shall be blessed. I decree that the Lord will honor you and he will set his glory upon you. I prophesy that God will set a pathway before you and he will make paths straight before you. And I speak that any weapon that is formed against you will not prosper. And I pray that any tongue that rises against you will be judged by God himself. I pray that crooked paths before you will be made straight. The Lord bless you and the Lord enlarge in your territory and increase your coast. May the Lord himself shine his continent upon you. May his face radiate upon you. And may the Lord be gracious to you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I truly honored and I appreciate your time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you another time. God bless you. Bye.